week, and Belita reported that the Republicans in the House of Representatives plan to clamp down on immigration. We're going to be discussing more of that today on the show with Our American Dream. This American Dream segment is brought to you by Aquino and Lowe Law Firm, answering your immigration questions. Attorney Richard Lowe of Aquino and Lowe Law Firm. Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to Cabo Bay in L.A. Happy New Year to you, too. All right, let's discuss citizenship for now. Um, we've been hearing about this before. Uh, there are different ways for a child to automatically get citizenship for themselves, and that is possible, right? Yes, there are essentially three ways in which a child can get uh, citizenship through uh, derivation of citizenship, that is, that their parent becomes a U.S. citizen, uh, through acquiring citizenship by being born abroad to a U.S. citizenship parent, or by being born in the United States. So there are three ways. You're looking at that on your screens right now with our slides. Let's first talk about the deri deri de derivation of the citizenship, if they derive it from parents acquiring naturalization. Yes. What are some of the criteria for that? Well, there's basically four criteria. So the, the child, and it's important that it's a child, so it has to be under age 18. And the one parent has to be a U.S. citizen, and the child must be living in the United States as a legal permanent resident, and the child must be living in the legal and physical custody of the citizen parent. So if all of those things occur under the age of 18, the child is automatically a U.S. citizen. So say, for example, um, the parents are divorced, the dad is a U.S. citizen and the mom is not. The child, if the child is living with the mom who's not a U.S. citizen, then it can't be. Right. There has to be physical and legal custody. And oftentimes in a divorce, uh, it, you can share physical and legal custody. So it's not always that the oh, just, one oh, parent okay. has the entire physical right. custody. Uh, so, so if custody is shared between the non-U.S. citizen and the U.S. citizen parent, then it's fine, too. Yeah, that's fine, too, okay. yes. What about, are we just talking about uh, biological children of naturalized uh, U.S. citizens or adopt, adopted children can also take advantage of this? This is also applies to adopted children, that if, they, if they're an adopted child and their adoptive parent becomes a U.S. citizen and they're here as a, net, as a legal permanent resident, then they too can become a U.S. citizen. Uh, but the only thing is they have to be legally adopted, so there has to be, there are paperwork involved. Yeah, absolutely. These are legal adoptions. You have to go through the court systems either here in the United States or in your home country. Uh, none, none of the other kind of uh, letting a, a, a relative raise the child, that's not really an adoption and not really considered uh, a, an adoptive child for uh, immigration purposes. Because we do that um, in, in the Filipino community, like some people, uh, par uh, parents in, in the Philippines with a lot of kids would send one or two here to be raised by a U.S. citizen relative here. What happens to those? Uh, they're kind of in a limbo, really, because they, they're, their biological parents aren't here and they don't have uh, the parents that are here that are raising them legally entitled to be called their parents. Because there's no paperwork. Because there's no paperwork. So. Unless they legally adopt. That's kids. right. They, okay. they have to go through some process of adoption either here or in their home country in order to complete that process. Okay. Number two is much easier to understand um, acquiring citizenship through being born to a U.S. citizen parent, whether here or outside, right? Well, if you're born here, then it doesn't matter whether your parents are U.S. citizens or not. So all of these are birth, birth abroad. Okay. Um, and it's easier in the sense that you're just determining whether or not the parent was a U.S. citizen. It's more difficult because there are some transmission requirements. Requirements. That oh. is, the parents has to have lived in the United States for uh, currently for five years, two of which were after age 14. Mm -hmm. uh, older laws required larger times of, of uh, residency, 10 years in some respects. So is it, it is 10 years before the child is born? Or? All of these are before the child is born. And, oh. and the idea is to establish that the person is not only a citizen because of they, they are a citizen, but they have actually resided and been a citizen in here in the United States, not just... Uh, like, uh, for example, citizenship through their parents, right. but they've never lived in the United oh, States, so okay. they can't transmit. Okay. And that is why the third way is now in question, or the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives, they're going to question that, especially by the Republicans, and that is, has, has something to do with um, acquiring citizenship by being born here. That's right. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the and we've talked about that before. A lot of people take advantage of that. That's the problem. They cross the border. They, they give birth here. I know of some Filipinos also, they fly here on the pretense of going on vacation, and then they, they, they give birth here. Well, I wouldn't say that there were a lot of people doing that. In fact, uh, studies have shown that really a very small percentage of people are 
purposefully come to the United States to have children. I mean, most people that are here having children are usually in mixed families. That is, one person is a citizen, one person isn't, mm -hmm. and the child is born to this mixed family uh, of uh, citizen and non-citizens. Right. Um, the way the law works now is if you are born in the United States, and the United States includes the 50 states plus uh, Virgin Islands, Guam, uh -huh. uh, and, and other uh, islands that are controlled by the United States, then you are a U.S. citizen, and this is by uh, the 14th Amendment. Which right, made and that, it's been there for the longest time. Yes, right. ever since uh, basically the end of slavery, and this and was the, the Dred Scott case, and then the 14th Amendment, which said if you are born here, then you are a U.S. And citizen. And what kind of change are the Republicans proposing? Well, what they're looking at doing is really fighting this through the state level. I, I don't believe that they think that they can do a constitutional amendment, which is what it would take. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to try to do, and I'm not sure exactly how, but they're going to raise some issues on the state level, either by denying, um, uh, denying birth certificates to people, to children who were born to illegal parents uh -huh. or some other manner, and then having that go to the courts and then having that be looked decided. at again by the Supreme Court to, make, to decide whether or not children of illegal immigrants are able to uh, get their citizenship simply by birth. Right. Well, thank you so much for uh, uh, enlightening us with your expertise uh, today on the show. That's the number to call on the screen. They do give free uh, office consultation, so please, please call them now and schedule your appointments. Thank you so much, and more power to you, Attorney Richard Lowe. Thank you. Bye-bye, Nick. Bye-bye, Don't go away.